Before we start drawing things on the screen, we need to master our understanding and use of coordinates. I will first explain what they are traditionally, and then how they are different when working with computers and game development. Let's head over to the TV screen first, and we'll open Pico8 on the computer when we are ready to practice using coordinates in code. Imagine you have a big map of a fantasy land, filled with forests, mountains, and castles. If you wanted to tell someone where a specific tree or castle was on this map, it would be pretty tricky, right? But what if we drew a grid over the map, with numbered columns and rows? Suddenly, we can describe any location accurately with just two numbers. Coordinates are numbers that tell us exactly where something is located on a grid. For example, you might say a castle is at the spot where column 3 meets row 5. We write this as open parentheses, 3, comma, 5, close parentheses. And just like that, we've used coordinates. If this is new to you, then you've probably used coordinates before without even realizing it. Have you played Battleship? It's usually the first game we play that teaches us coordinates. When you say B4 to target a ship, you're actually using a coordinate system. The letter you say is for which column, and the number is for which row. Coordinate systems help us describe locations accurately, and we will use it constantly when making computer games. So it's important to understand and practice thinking with coordinates as much as possible. In school, they teach you the Cartesian plane. This is the coordinate system you will have or have had the most practice with. Imagine our grid on the map again. We could explore in this direction and just add to the numbers. If we explore the map in the opposite direction, then we count below zero into negative numbers. Now we can count infinitely in any direction and still describe the location of something accurately, no matter where it is. Let's remove the map now and just talk about the grid itself. Now that we have zoomed out, we have two main lines that cross in the middle at point zero zero. This is called the origin, and these lines are called axes. The horizontal line is the x-axis, and the vertical line is the y-axis. Axis is singular, axes is plural. The next thing you learn about the Cartesian plane is that it's split into four parts. Each part is called a quadrant. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Whenever we read or create graphs, the default that we tend to use and think with is quadrant 1, where the origin is at the bottom left corner and the numbers increase both when going right and when going up. Just to give you an idea about how this applies to making games, this center point, this origin, could be your main character, and you'll probably want your character to move in any direction, not just up and to the right in quadrant 1. Also, you'll probably want to have other things in the game around your character, like bad guys to fight or items to collect. Thinking with this grid on top of your game is necessary to know which direction to move in, how far away things are, and if you bump into anything. So obviously, these X and Y coordinates will be used everywhere in your game. Now let's focus in on the numbers along each axis. Traditionally, on the X axis, Moving right from the origin means we're going in the positive direction, and moving left means we're going in the negative direction. For the y-axis, up is positive and down is negative. As a rule, we always give the x-coordinate first, then the y-coordinate. If you mix up your x and y, you'll end up in the wrong spot. So it's always x first, then y. Remember the origin is 0, 0. That's our starting point for everything. From there, we can move in any direction. If we move three steps to the right, then we end up at 3x, and because we didn't move up or down, we're still at 0y. If we are at the origin and moved three steps left instead, then we end up at negative 3x, and still 0y. The y-axis works in the same way, but in the up and down directions. Moving up means using positive numbers, so 0, 4 is 4 steps up from the origin. Moving down means using negative numbers, so 0, negative 4 
is four steps down from the origin. We can combine these to locate any point anywhere in 2D space. For example, 5, 2 means five steps right and two steps up. Negative 3, 4 means three steps left and four steps up. If this is new for you, or you haven't used it in a long time, take the time now to grab some graph paper, draw the X and Y axes across the center of the page, and write the numbers along the axes. Next, quiz yourself by pointing to a random spot on the page and figure out what the coordinates would be for that point. Master this by being able to call out the correct coordinates quickly. And be sure that you are following the rule to always say the X before the Y. You can also practice it the opposite way. Have someone tell you coordinates, and you have to quickly locate and draw that point on the graph paper. Trust me when I tell you to go practice something until you master it. This will make everything you learn and do on this course so much easier. So how do you know when you have mastered it? Simple. When it becomes so easy and fast that you barely have to think about it. If using the paper gets too easy, then throw the paper away, close your eyes, and use your imagination instead. Alright, so far we've only looked at the coordinate system taught in math class, but it's a little different for computer screens, video games, and of course, Pico 8. Imagine taking our Cartesian plane and flipping it upside down. Then, instead of having the origin in the center, let's move it to the top left corner. This is how we use the grid when talking in screen coordinates. The origin is now in the top left corner, but it is still 0, 0. Another difference is that the direction of the y-axis is now flipped. So normally we think of positive as up and negative as down, but for computer screens, you'll have to get used to thinking with positive being down and negative being up. That makes the top of the screen 0, y. But you should still imagine the x and y axes going beyond it, because you can draw things outside of the screen, and you have to be able to imagine where they are even if you don't see them on the screen. Another important difference is how we place the coordinates themselves. Traditionally, we number the lines of the grid and place points at the intersections, where two lines cross, like placing stones in the game of Go. But in screen coordinates, we're dealing with pixels, which are more like the squares on a chessboard, where the pieces sit on the square, not on the lines. So the numbers of the screen coordinates refer to the actual pixel, not the space between pixels. This also means a shift in thinking about the origin and the x and y axes. When I said that the origin is now the top left corner of the screen, I bet you imagined it on the corner of the monitor outside of the screen itself where the x-axis is the top edge of the monitor, and the y-axis is on the left edge. That's perfectly logical, and that would make you think that the first pixel in the top left corner of the screen must then be 1, 1, right? But in screen coordinates, the origin is actually the very first pixel. So adjust your imagination slightly to move the origin and axes onto the screen itself. This means the leftmost column of pixels is 0 on the x-axis, and the top row of pixels is 0 on the y-axis. In an earlier video I warned you about programming sometimes counting from 0 and sometimes from 1. When we talk about where something is on the screen, we always count the pixels starting at 0. For example, the Pico 8 screen is only 128 pixels wide and 128 pixels tall. It's really nice that it's square, it keeps things simple. But what is the coordinate of the bottom right pixel? Easy. 128, 128, right? No. It would be if the first pixel started counting at 1. But because the first pixel is 0, everything is pushed down and to the right by one space. So the 128th pixel is actually number 127 instead and the coordinate of the bottom right pixel is 127, 127. So when you are thinking about where things are on the screen, just double check that you have adjusted your thinking properly. These differences can be pretty confusing at first. Many students mix them up, especially the y-axis direction. So remember, in screen coordinates, as you move down the screen, the y value increases. 
and pixel coordinate 128, 128 is actually off the bottom right of the screen. All right, that's enough theory. Let's head over to the computers to put this knowledge to practice using Pico 8 itself. Let's open a new blank game and we're going to practice using coordinates in the simplest way possible by changing a single pixel on the screen to be a different color. Pico 8 has a built-in way to do that. Let's type in P-S-E-T, P-Set, which stands for Pixel Set, and it will set one pixel to a certain color. In fact, if we run it now, we get an error. We need to give it information, and to do that, we add parentheses to hold our information. The first thing it needs to know is which pixel we want to change. So we use coordinates, X and Y. Following the rule, the first number is the X coordinate. So how far from the left side of the screen? Go ahead and try any number from 0 to 127, so that it's definitely a pixel on the screen. Just like when we wrote coordinates, we need to separate X and Y with a comma. Now we can pick another number from 0 to 127 to be the Y coordinate. As you can see, I picked the pixel at 60x and 100y, and let's give it a third piece of information. Separate the information again with a comma, and we need to give it a color. Let's take a look at the Pico 8 colors in the sprite editor. There are 16 colors to choose from, but again, they start counting from 0, which is black. Look at the bottom left corner of the screen to see the color number. The colors count up from left to right in this display. Then it goes down to brown, number 4, 5, 6, white is 7, and red is 8, 9, 10, 11, and blue is 12, 13, 14, and color number 15 is our 16th color option. Go ahead and pick a color you like. I suggest something bright, like red, blue, or green. Number 11. I'll go with that. So back to the code editor, let's add in 11. Spaces are ignored when we run the code, so it might help you to space out the color number from the X and Y values. Just make sure we still have a comma between each value. And let's run this code. Hey, there's my little green pixel. Do you see the pixel in your screen? If you don't, it might be among all this text that's still here, so let's clear it to make finding our pixels easier. Before we draw the pixels with PSET, let's clear the screen with CLS, clear screen. It's green too, so it also needs parentheses to run. But we don't have to give it any information. Empty parentheses will tell it to do whatever it does by default, which is clearing the screen to black. But now that you know the color numbers, you can tell it to clear the screen to any color you like. Watch. Just make sure that it's a color that lets you see your pixel color easily. Cool. I'll keep my background black since green pops out the most there. Now we can play with changing the X and Y coordinates of this one pixel. While I'm doing this, I am imagining the grid of pixels with the origin and the axes, but I'll display it on the side here while we practice. One thing that's nice is that screen coordinates are always whole numbers. Right now, I'm drawing pixels 60x and 100y, and I'll try adding a decimal to those. You can do the same with whatever numbers you chose. So how about 60.3 and 100.8? Run the game, and the pixel didn't move. It still worked, but since there are no pixels between 60 and 61, nor any pixels between 100 and 101, it just drew the pixel at 60 and 100. Just make note of this, because it will come up in the future when we start animating and moving things on the screen. Decimals in our coordinates do work, but each pixel is only at whole numbers. Alright, this time follow along with me exactly. Duplicate this line a few times. Remember the keyboard shortcuts. And now let's test out 127 by 127. Yep, that's the bottom right corner. Let's make these next two the other two corners on the screen. Okay, pop quiz. What is the bottom left corner pixel's coordinate? Pause if you need more time. It is 0x and 127y. Nice. 
How about the final corner, top right? That is 127x and 0y. There we go, we've marked out all four corners of the screen. Were those easy? Okay, here's a tricky one. What is the coordinate at the center of the screen? You know what? I'm not even going to tell you. Consider this your first official coding problem in this course. You have to think with all the information about screen coordinates, the flipped y-axis, the size of the screen, and the fact that we count the pixels starting at pixel zero. Oh hey, don't forget, you are in the Pico 8 Game Dev RPG now, and this is your first side quest. You there! Hmm? Hey, over here! I need help. I'm just an old farmer, and my carrots are dying. See, I have this field. It's square. It fits 128 pixels, uh, I mean carrots, wide, and 128 carrots long. It's genius! But the problem is, I only have one sprinkler. I keep putting it at the top left corner, but it doesn't reach all the carrots. So I need you to move it to the center of the field. Can you do that for me? Tell me the coordinates in the comments. I might not be smart enough to figure it out myself, but I am smart enough to break the fourth wall. Don't question it. And please, try to explain how you got the answer so I don't have to keep asking everyone who comes by my farm. Thanks, Sonny. I'll give you some of my world-famous carrot stew, and you'll get your precious experience points too. All right, off you go now. Don't let me down. And don't go helping them teach. Let them figure it out. It's good for their intelligence stat. Another fourth wall break? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So go play around and practice setting different pixels to different colors while you figure out which pixel is at the center of the screen. Master the screen coordinates so you're ready for the next more difficult side quest that comes along. This video is sponsored by the wonderful supporters on Coffee. If you'd like to support future videos and content, please join these generous people who are helping us dedicate more of our time and effort to bring free educational content like this course to thousands of students worldwide. Subscribe to the channel, and for more information, check out our website at nerdyteachers.com.